on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. That's right. Worldwide. We're everywhere. We're America's morning show. Thanks for joining us here. On O'Connor and Company, coming up at 735, James Rosen, White House correspondent for Newsmax. And at 805, Cassandra Happy, if you're already lining up your plan for your Black Friday sales, you want to talk to her. She's from Wallet Hub, and she's been uh, diving into some of these sales that aren't exactly what they're telling you they are. We'll get to that coming up. I'm Larry O'Connor. Angela Marbito's here with us. Hey, Angela, good to have you. It's great to be with you. Good to have you. I'm not sure why. I, I jump into the Georgia <laughs> thing when you're here. I'm not sure why. Uh, thanks for being here. And it's great to have Asra Nomani. Of course, she's the author of Woke Army, an incredibly prophetic book considering what we see right now on our streets. She's also a senior fellow at Independent Women's Network. Her other book, Standing Alone, an American Woman's Struggle for the Soul of Islam. Uh, she's been a fierce advocate on behalf of parents' rights and education. And uh, it's always great to talk with you, Asra. Thanks for joining us. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And great to talk to you, Angela, too. There's there's so much to get to, but I do want to sort of talk about Woke Army a little bit. You talk about the intersection of the radical Muslim activists and uh, how they are really just carrying the flag for intolerant Marxism. And you've seen it play out here. You, of course, uh, as a Muslim American woman, you sort of had your eyes opened with the, what happened to Daniel Pearl, your friend and colleague. Uh, and the horrific face of radical Islamic terrorism. And it's got to be just chilling for you to see these pro-Hamas voices amplified, not just on college campuses or on our city streets, but in the halls of Congress. Yes, and where else? On the football fields of Fairfax County Public Schools. Yeah. Because, yeah, Larry and Angela, it's like 20, for 21 years I've been researching this book about this nexus between the far left and the Islamists or the Muslims who believe in political Islam. And the story brought me right into Fairfax County, Virginia, where we have a hub of those organizations sitting in northern Virginia sending their propaganda and their ideology out into the world and it, lo and behold, it is now expressing itself in these chants from the river to the sea at mm-hmm. Langley High School, at Woodson High School, Oakton High School. And indeed, October 7th, I felt as if I was right back on January 23rd, 2002, Larry, when yeah. my friend Danny Pearl was kidnapped and murdered. And, and you know, I watched Danny's Uh, murder video a hundred times because as a reporter I was trying to identify the hand of the man who held Danny's head Mm. like that's what's so awful and it's something that I haven't spoken about a lot because I wanted to save the world from those details but now you're all with me you know you've seen those images that have come out of Israel and the Hamas's go programs and we all now are together in understanding this threat that my parents my friends in the muslim community who are reformers and feminists and ex-muslims have been warning about and and indeed like the the details from the book are like now on the pages are, are the, from the, they've gone from the pages of the book to the streets now and mm-hmm. i've been amongst them from the white house to Constitution Avenue, and and there's a bloodlust for destroying the state of Israel now and the Jews that Mm -hmm. live there. Azra, I'm just so sorry you've had to be a witness to the horrific consequences uh, of hate. There there really are no words, uh, but I'd like to get your take on the origins of some of that hate in the rising generation, and that is the student walkouts, the student protests that we've seen uh, in San Francisco, in New York, uh, and a couple other cities, and I use student protests in air quotes, because in all of these instances, it's been a toolkit written by what are essentially pro-Hamas adults encouraging teachers to have their students get up and walk out of class. Uh, What is the solution here to this indoctrination that's happening in the schools? Oh, my gosh. You're just giving me chills now, Angela, because you actually expressed the paragraph of our exclusive Fairfax County Times article that's going to come out this week. And indeed, 
I found the toolkit that the students in Fairfax County Public Schools have been using for this past month. It has the chants that they should say, including from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. It, yeah, it includes, Larry, the clothes that they should wear, the email that they should send to Abrar Omesh, school board member, in case they get into any trouble. And what do they um, refuse to do? They refuse to acknowledge the state of Israel, you know, in all of this. And so, Angela, what is the root of this? So for 21 years, this is what I've been examining. How do we get there? Because I would hear it from my mosque that I grew up in, um, in Morgantown, West Virginia. I would hear the hate. And I, I, you know, have to get to patient zero. And it would be the ideology on websites. You know, this is a sermon you can download. And so it is man-made, first of all. It's the use of my birth religion, my faith of Islam, to indoctrinate people into the most extremist interpretation of the religion. And it is funded by this multi-million dollar enterprise. And Angela, it is based, this is what I was able to establish, right here in Northern Virginia, 500 Grove Street in Herndon, Virginia, sits a building that was established in the 1980s as a headquarters for many of these organizations, like the American Muslims for Palestine, Council on American Islamic Relations, and they have sent money to organizations like Students, Ju- Students for Justice in Palestine. And those are the adults that are spearheading this indoctrination of our kids. Yeah. And what can we do about it? We have to inoculate our kids and we have to inoculate ourselves so that yeah. we're not, so our brains are not hijacked. By yeah. I'm, I mean, we got to keep trying to change this at the school board level, but they're, they're so, they don't care. So we'll keep they shouting at them, but we got to focus on our kids and we got to make sure our kids know the truth. Real fast, I've only got about like a minute or so left, but this story about this student who drew a swastika flag yes. at Langley as part of an anti Israel protest, um, is it true here that they also suspended the Asian American student who blew the whistle on, on is, this anti Jew hate? Yes, it is absolutely 100% true. And the school system is gaslighting parents, and they're saying, oh, we didn't, um, we didn't suspend him for blowing the whistle. We suspended him for violating our Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, which was sharing, allegedly sharing the picture of the swastika flag, and, you know, they're using a digital excuse, wait, right? Wait, wait, for, wait, wait, wait. So yeah, you're, yeah. I, I understand yeah. it being against the rules to share a, a symbol of hate, a swastika, but he shared yeah. it to draw attention to it, to say, yeah. look at what this kid did, and they exactly. suspended him for that? Yeah, and not this the hundreds ridiculous. of kids. Yeah, not the hundreds of kids from the Muslim Students Association that have been sharing their photos of the videos and the rallies. And I know we only have 30 seconds, but I have to, I'm going to um, direct, I'm going to give a shout out to you guys, of course, on Twitter. And I want to leave people always with hope. And yes. um, and I tweeted out, you know, just sitting from my bed, uh, right, typing with my thumbs as we do on, on our phone keyboards, <laughs> a message of love for being a Muslim in America. Because one of these activists on the streets named Susan Sarandon, an actress that many people will know, yeah. said that Jews now finally have a taste of what it means to have um, be a Muslim in America. So I gave her a little lesson about what it means to be a Muslim in America, and that means I get to live free with the wind in my hair. I get to speak to you with no fear of threat from my community or from the government, for the most part, right? Um, And I get to um, live, you know, fully empowered as a citizen of this United States and as an American by choice. And um, and I got to tell you guys that the the response to it um, is now at several million Retweet oh, yeah. Your, your response to Susan Sarandon is fantastic. And it's yeah, exactly the way but, to go about this. You are uh, 
We're blessed uh, to have you amongst us, Asher Nomani. Thank you so much. And our best to your family, too, this Thanksgiving, your parents. Oh, and what's so beautiful is that everybody resonates, and that's that's the collective consciousness yep. that we can do, Angela, to, to change the course of history. Thank you, Asher. Take care. Oh, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. It is-